Good evening, happy Wednesday, happy midweek service. Welcome to uh, our church. And uh, tonight we will have a beautiful topic about our series. And um, one game away, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Actually, I'm a Clipper fan, but uh, by default, <laughs> LA Clippers and LA Lakers, hopefully, after 10 years. <laughs> the way, uh, magandang magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. And welcome to your church, the LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. And uh, welcome to our midweek service. This is the 52 weeks journey no? of a lifetime. This is to ensure everyone reads the entire Bible in a year. We will not attempt to discuss the Bible word for word, but uh, we will give you a summary of each book of the entire uh, Bible and uh, each book doon sa, uh, sa, sa Biblia from, uh, from uh, Old Testament to New Testament. So we started, no, just a review, nako, exciting, no? kasi bakit patapos na tayo. No? We will close out yung Pentateuch, yung first five books of the Old Testament written by Moses. So on our first Wednesday, if you will remember, we talked about walk through the Bible. Pinag-usapan natin ano-ano ba yung matatagpuan sa Bible. No? In 40-45 minutes, we talked about from Genesis to Revelation. And then we started with uh, Genesis. No, uh, This is our sixth Wednesday. On the second Wednesday, we talked about Genesis. Yung two parts nito, the mankind in general and the patriarchs of Israel. And then from slavery to freedom, we talk about Exodus. No? Yung ito, ito meron three parts. No? Yung Exodus, yung exit nila from Egypt. And then yung kanilang, uh, yung law, tawag yung the law, yung binigay sa kanila ng Panginoon. At we talked about yung tabernacle. Tapos the third book, we talk about Leviticus and offering to the Lord. So meron tong five parts na pinag-usapan natin na mga interesting din. Yung mga offerings, yung priesthood, ano ba yung mga clean and, and yung mga unclean para sa Panginoon na binigay sa kanila. Yung ano yung the atonement at yung the holidays, yung pinag-usapan natin yun. <clears throat> and then last week we talk about the book of Numbers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or about the wanderers, no? yung mga paikot-ikot. Okay, meron din tong four parts. We talk about preparations for the wilderness, wanderings nila, the Balaam incident, at preparations to Canaan, no? to enter Canaan. Ngayon, ganda ang ating topic. Kasi sa lima, no? siyempre, paborito nating lahat, Genesis, di ba? Tsaka yung, yung Exodus na nandoon yung, ano, eh, yung parang uh, very cinematic na mga 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 experiences nila pero isa sa pinaka magandang book sa lima na to no ako i find the Deuteronomy na very interesting no at uh, meron isang actually it sa limang book ito lang yung book na tuwing feast of tabernacle every 7 years binabasa nila ng po kasi it's a summary Okay, nung first four books. Okay, bakit tinawag na ang Deuteronomy or Book of Deuteronomy ay looking back, moving forward. Alamin natin yan. May joke nga yan eh. May kasabihan yan. I'll do unto you what Deuteronomy. Yeah, last ka na yan. <laughs> Alright, this book gets its name from a Greek word. No? Meaning, ano yun? Second law. Ayan. No, Deuteronomy means second law. Deuteronomy 17, 18 no, directs the future king of Israel to make a copy of this law. Kasi nga, babasahin every seven years. Tingnan natin, ano nasulat? When he takes the throne of, the, of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on a scroll, a copy of this law taken from that of the Levitical priest. Dito rin sa Deuteronomy, matatagpuan natin yung pagpapaalam ng kanilang deliverer. No? Ito yung uh, sin na Goodbye Moses. Moses, no, dito sa Deuteronomy, 
gave his farewell addresses which brought together the laws recorded in Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. So sinama rin niya. No, nagkaroon siya ng ano, tell-all story. Kumbaga, no, hindi lang kaharap si Boyabunda pero kaharap niya yung buong Israel. Now, this compilation of the laws is what we call yun na nga, the book of Deuteronomy. Kaya importante na basahin natin itong libro na ito. Tingnan natin yung brief outline ng pag-uusapan natin ngayong gabi. Okay, number one, in first part, review of the past. No, chapters 1 to 4, ginawa ni Moses, no, kumbaga, kinuwento niya ano nangyari sa kanila. Sa so part 2, at meron naman dito pinag-usapan yung commandments for the present Israelites, no, yung mga papasok doon sa, sa promised land. And then sa part 3, uh, it talks about ano yung magiging future ng Israel. No, imagine nyo, no, kumbaga ang Diyos, Napaka napaka detailed eh no. Kumbaga maligaw ka pa ba naman? Ewan ko na lang, 'di ba? Kumbaga sinasab, merong merong kang pagkakataon magkaroon ka ng review, may pagkakataon na i-discuss sa yung present mo, may pagkakataon pa na dinidiscuss sa yung future mo. Kaya kan napabasahin lang natin yung Biblia natin, bubuksan natin. Sigurado ako sa inyo sa pamagitan ng tulong ng Holy Spirit, mangungusap, na no, mangungusap ang salita ng Diyos sa inyo. Ilang beses ko rin naman binasa yung Biblia na wala akong guidance sa Holy Spirit, ang ending nakatulog ako. Kasi I find it very very boring. Pero nakilala ko ang Diyos, tinulungan ako ng Holy Spirit. Nako nga bang binabasa ko yung Bible para nag-jump out yung mga words no na halos talaga na kinataba ng puso ko at ako'y lumago sa aking buhay spiritual. At part 4, ayun na nga in Death of Moses chapters 31 to 34. No, alamin natin paano ba namatay si Moses, no? Paano siya inilibing? Nako, interesting to. At saka uh, ano ang naging turing sa kanya ng mga tao bago siya namatay at pagkatapos siyang mamatay. Okay, mapapansin niyo marami sa pag-uusapan natin nahahawig sa present lives natin ngayon at pwede natin magamit na guidelines sa ating future. Pag-usapan natin, game ka na ba? No? Kalabitin ka tabi mo, game ka na ba? Ayan. Pag-usapan natin so, yung first part, yung review of the past. Dito, makikita natin yung 20 days versus 40 years. Ano yun? No? Makikilala natin yung tatlo, si Edom, si Moab at si Amon. Okay? Sino-sino itong mga to? Ito yung mga anak no? ng kapatid ni Iso, na si, uh, ang kapatid ni Jacob na si Iso, at yung mga anak ni Lot na kapamangkin ni Abraham. Ano yung, ano yung pag-uusapan natin tungkol sa tatlong to? No? Mamaya abangan natin. Let's start. Alam nyo, as Moses begins his uh, first speech, <clears throat> He reviews the past. No? Ni-review niya ano nangyari, ano mga kaganapan. No? Kung baga matuto tayo. Sabi nga ay may kasabihan na uh, respect the lessons of history. The nation is gathered on the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan near Mount Nebo. It has taken them 40 years to get here. Mm. To give you a clue. Uh, to give you an idea pala. From Egypt, no? Doon sa Exodus, bago sila makarating dito sa kanilang supposedly jump off, jump off point papuntang promised land, 40 years sila inabot kasi nagpaikot-ikot sila doon sa disyerto. Tinignan ko nga, tinanong ko si Google, sabi ko, Google, how long is the drive you know, from Cairo? No, sumagot si Alexa. <laughs> Sabi ni, sabi, sabi ni Google at ni Alexa, tinanong ko sila, how long is the drive from Cairo, Egypt to Jerusalem, Israel? Okay, kasi uh, nalaman ko na pagka nag, nag, ano, sumama ka sa mga, yung mga trip to Israel na mga package, minsan meron silang in-offer na hindi lang sa Israel. Pwede ka mag-side trip papuntang Egypt para makita mo yung mga pyramids. No? And binabas lang daw yan. Tapos meron silang uh, mga, what you call this, mga hagad na kasama na para protectionan sila na hindi sila kasala, kasali din sa sigalot ng Arab nations at saka ng mga Israelites. Anyway, the truth that, uh, imagine nyo na lang kung part yun ng trip, eh, hindi ganun kalayo yun. Na sabi nga ni Google at saka ni Alexa, the total driving time is 9 hours and 52 minutes. Ganun lang kalapit. Your trip begins in Cairo, Egypt. 
it ends in Jerusalem, Israel, or vice versa. Hindi na mo mabago yung, 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 ano niya, yung distansya niya. Anyway, ganyan lang kalapit pag din-drive mo. Eh syempre, wala naman silang kotse nun. Now, according from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 2, it should have taken them only 11 days to go from Horeb or Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. Ay, Kadesh Barnea nga yung take-off point nila. Papunta doon sa... So ano kasi 'di ba galing sila ng Egypt, pumunta sila Mount Sinai, no, doon binigay yung yung law. Pagkatapos sa Mount Sinai, pumunta sila sa Kadesh Barnea, papunta sa Promised Land, no, sa Kadesh Barnea, doon sila nagcamp para mag-spy papunta sa Canaan sa sa Promised Land. So, therefore, therefore the entire trip from Mount Sinai, no, to Mount Nebo could be made in about 20 days, but it has taken the Israelites about 40 years. Bakit? Because of disobedience. Ayan. Kakapatid, kapag ka tayo disobedience sa Panginoon, kakantahin natin yung kanta ni Randy Santiago. Paikot, ikot. Diba? Talagang malilito tayo sa buhay. Kaya tayo binigyan ng maganda na, na, na salita ng Diyos na tama, dapat natin basahin, namnamin at ipamuhay para matuto tayo at uh, magkaroon tayo ng guiding principle. Balikan natin si Moses. Alam mo, si Moses, no, he, he, he reminded the Israelites of the trip from the Sinai, no, from Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. Ano nangyari? Kasi nandun yung mga masasalimuot na experiences. Eh. Now, during this time, Moses no, had received the law and the tabernacle had been constructed. So, naalala niyo yun, yung tabernacle na pinag-usapan natin sa Leviticus, no, yung law na binigay sa kanya. Okay? So, yun, nandoon na yun. Tapos na kasi papasok na sila doon sa uh, promised land. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 1 to 23, Moses speaks of the nations they had avoided. Okay? Importante rin natin maintindihan anong connection nito sa Genesis. Okay? So, papunta sila ng, uh, ng promised land. Meron silang mga dinaanan na mga nations. Sino itong mga nations na to? Okay? Edom. Si Iso kasi, other name niya is Edom. So, yung mga descendants niya o yung mga apo niya, mga anak niya, mga lahi niya, ang tawag, mga Edomites. Okay? Sino si Iso? Kapatid ni Jacob na naging ang pangalan ay Israel. Ito yung niloko ni Jacob. Right? So, kamag-anak nila yan. Pero, hindi sila in good terms. Hmm. Nakakapag-relate ka ba? May mga kamag-anak ka bang hindi in good terms? Anyway, Si Moab at si Amon naging Moabites and Ammonites, yung mga descendants sila. Kasi descendant sila ni Lot. Okay, sino si Lot? Si Lot, pamangkin ni Abraham, nakasakasama niya from the land of Ur papunta doon sa Canaan. Alright. Si Lot, itong mga anak niya, si Lot, naalala niya si Lot na nung ginu- ginunaw ng Panginoon ng Sodom and Gomorrah, meron siyang kasama niyang asawa niya. At saka dalawang anak niyang babae. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, huwag kayong lilingon, ay lumingon yung asawa. Naging pillar of salt. Okay. Na, na, natira, nag-survive si Lot at ang dalawa niyang anak na babae. Ang ginawa ng dalawang anak niya babae, dumiskate ng sarili. Hindi, hindi nila kinonsult ang Panginoon. Sabi nila, kailangan magkaroon tayo ng mga anak, magkaroon tayo ng descendants. Ito yung controversial. Nilasig nila yung tatay nila at saka nila nirape. At nabunti sila. Nung nabunti sila, eto yung mga descendants, ang mga Moabites and Ammonites. Uh, interesting fact, si Ruth ay isang Moabite. Okay? Lola ni Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Alamin niyo yan habang uh, nagpapasakay ng Biblia. So, tini- minibigyan ko lang kayo ng teaser no? para mas maging exciting at saka maging interesting basahin ng Biblia. Minsan kasi, ang gusto ng tao, yung pa- pachismis eh. No? Parang yung mga, yung, mga, ano, yung mga thumbnail ni Rafi Tulpo na kumbaga, pachismis. Eh, no? Kumbaga, eto, hiniwala yan ang asawa, sumama sa kabit, bla bla bla. Ayun, ikiklik ng tao. Ayan. O ngayon, Ah, binibigyan ko kayo ng thumbnail. Alamin niyo kung sino si Ruth. Alamin niyo kung sino si Rahab. No, alamin niyo. Anak ko, madaming lola si Jesus na pinagmula ng kanyang lahi. No, na kumbaga mapapansin niyo na galing sa hindi maganda na na sitwasyon. Anyway, balik tayo sa ating pinag-usapan. Now, since these three nations eh blood relatives ng Israel, God did not permit 
no, the Israelites to fight them. Now, ang ginawa ng Diyos, He simply protected Israel as they traveled through the nation's borders. So, hindi niya pinag-conflict ang mga to kasi magka, magkakamag-anak nga. But, meron pa rin mga ibang nations na dinaanan sila na, yun na nga, eh, kolecheng eh. Gusto talagang galit sila sa Israel. Alamin natin, ano nangyari. In chapter 2, verses 20, uh, verse 24 hanggang chapter 3 verse 29 Moses tells of the nations they have defeated oh except the sa mga, mga blood relatives sila may iba pa silang dinaanan ng mga nations na nako Israel was kind to these people by offering to march through faithfully sabi nila dada makikidaan lang po but the nations attack them ayun eh alam niyo na hanggang ngayon di ba madaming tao galit sa Israel. No, imagine niyo lit ng Israel no. Tapos ang dami mga bansa na nakapalibot sa kanya, no, mga uh, doon sa Middle East, lahat 'yun galit sa kanya. <laughs> diba? Pero imagine niyo kung paano siya mag-survive. Imagine niyo yung kanyang military strength. No, anyway, makikita niyo yung hand ng Lord sa kanya. So inatake sila nito. Ang ginawa ng Diyos, so God conquered them. Eh halimutan niya 'di ba yung principle doon sa Genesis, 'di ba? Anong sabi niya kay Abraham? Diba? I will bless those who will bless you and I will curse those who will curse you. So, ay ay yung ano? Ay yung padaanin yung mga anak ko? I'll just conquer you. Okay, ganito yan. Kung ikaw may relasyon ka sa Panginoon Diyos, anak ka niya. And some people are trying to pull you down. Some people are trying to, you know, ayaw ka nila mag-progress. Pagsasalita ka na masama, they will create fake news or lies against you. No? Or sasaktan ka, or pagpaplanuhan ka, or whatever. Or ano man, ang isipin nila masama sa'yo. No? Relax. Your God will avenge you. Your God will protect you. No? So you don't have to do nothing. Don't do, you, don't, you don't have to do anything. You just have to cry out to God and let the Lord protect you. So, so kasi ganito eh, ginawa na ng Panginoon sa Israel eh. So certainly there should have been an encouragement no, to the Israelites as they prepared to enter the promised land. Binigyan na sila ng Exhibit A, Israel. This is how I will protect you. Pagdating nyo, pag-conquer nyo ng Canaan. Eh nakinig ba sila? Eh bakit dun sa last na kwento natin? Dun sa Numbers, sa Book of Numbers last week. Di ba? May Joshua at Caleb nagsasabi sa kanila na pasukin natin. Ay gusto pang batuhin yung dalawa. <laughs> Di ba? Gusto pang batuhin yung dalawa. Di ba? I mean, ang daming mga Exhibit A na pinakita ng Panginoon. Exhibit B na ganito ka faithful. Kaya ko kayong protectionan. Eh, wala, walang faith, no? Walang napaka-disobedient ng puso. O oh, nakakapag-relate ba tayo ngayon sa panahon natin ngayon? Ilang beses na tayo sinagip ng Diyos? Ilang beses na tayo pinatawad? Ilang beses na tayo minahal? Ilang beses na ilang beses na nag-provide para sa atin? 'Di ba? Magkaroon lang ng konting problema, angal na agad, no? Naka-social media na agad. Ano ba naman buhay 'to, 'di ba? <laughs> Alam niyo, totoo ang kasabihan, life is beautiful. Pero dapat may karugtong. Life is beautiful if you have if you if you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yun ang totoo. No? Mga kasi nyo, subukan nyo. Experience nyo. Alam nyo, God has guided and protected them, no? itong Israel, no? in the past. no And surely, He will do so in the future. Kaso lang, hindi naniwala. Anong consequence? Hindi nakapasok yung generation na to. Ang natiri lang si Joshua at si Caleb at yung mga bagong generation doon sa 40 years. Okay? Alam nyo, we would do well to remember how God has taken care of us during crisis. No? This would encourage us to have more faith in God in the present and the future. Sana no, maging kapulutan natin ng aral itong experience ng Israel na kumbaga, sa panahon ng krisis, makikita mo talaga yung hand ng Panginoon. Diba? Kaya dapat, ma-realize natin na, teka lang, may sinasabi ang Diyos dito. Eh. Diba? Napapatunayan ko na buhay siya. Diba? Eh, sa present life mo ngayon, sa, pre- sa future mo, na mo kalilimutan, may Diyos ka. Dahil sa past mo, may Diyos na sumagip sa iyo. In chapter 
chapter 2 verse uh, chapter 4 verse 2 God warns Israel about something hmm, of which the scribes and the Pharisees were guilty centuries later. Naku, nawarn na pala sila noon. Ano, kilala niyo naman 'tong mga scribe na 'to, 'tong mga pariseo na 'to, no? Ito, yung mga tao na ano niyo, nag-uphold ng law, pero winner na sila, no? Centuries ago nung panahon pa ni Moses, ano yung sinabi? Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Oh, bawal dagdag bawas daw. Kung ano yung binigay ng Diyos, wag mo nang dagdagan yung wento. Wag mo rin babawasan. Ako, alam nyo, static kong faith. Eh, napansin ko, no? Yung Ten Commandments nila at saka ten commandments na totoo magkaiba. Hay? At saka madami mga religion ngayon na mayroong the book of ganito, the book of ganyan. Aside from the Bible, mayroong mga dagdag na iba pang mga books, 66 books lang ay ginawa ng iba pang mga books. Bawal nga, no? Sinabi ni Moses, ang dagdag bawas. Si Moses tumanggap ng 10 utos mula sa Diyos. Anong ginawa ng mga Israelites? Almost 700 out of the 10 commandments nag-create sila. Diba? Ang daming bawal, di ba? O kasi negosyo rin eh. Di ba? The more kasi na mas hindi mo maintindihan, the more na Latin, the more na Hispanic, the more mas mga matalino yung nagtuturo. Right? The more mas mukha kang, ah, wala akong alam, sige, sunod na lang ako. Ilang beses ba tayo nagdasal sa buhay natin, hindi naman natin naiintindihan. Eh, totoo lang po, napakasimple ng Diyos. Ang gusto niya, um, mag- mag- mangusap tayo sa kanya pamagitan ng ating puso. Okay? Pwede natin basahin mismo. Hindi natin, di natin kailangan umasa sa isang tao para basahin para sa atin ng Biblia. Meron tayong laya. Buksan natin. Okay? At wag natin dadagdagan at wag natin babawasan. Para lalo na sa negosyo. Okay? Nako, the Lord saith no, na magbibigay ka. Nako po, bawal po iyan. Magagalit ang Panginoon sa inyo. Tandaan nyo, disobedience of this command will cause many of the problems of Israel has after entering the promised land. No? Forward 2020. O, ba? Ang dami nating problema. Dahil nagdadagdag bawas tayo. Alam nyo, galing ako sa isang bansa na natunay nga na 80% kristyano. Pero hindi hindi makita ng ibang bansa na kami ay kristyano. Bakit? Napakahirap namin bansa. Napakagulo namin. Kami-kami nagpapatayan. Hindi makita yung ugali ng kristyano. Bakit? Kasi nagturo sa atin ng kristyanismo nagdagdag bawas sa salita ng Diyos. Kung ano yung papabor para sa kanila, yun yung tinuro. Kaya nga po tayo merong walk through the Bible para i-encourage kayo to read the Bible for yourself. No? At saka makita nyo ano ba talaga yung sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Nandaan nyo, no? fast forward, ito yung nangyari sa atin. No? Panahon ng Kastila, panahon ng pan, panahon, pa ni, panahon pa ni Lapu-Lapu. <laughs> eh, eh, yun na nga. Diba? Naturuan tayo na mali. Kaya ngayon, nire-reap natin yung consequence. Pero may panahon pa. Huwag natin ipasa sa ating next generation. Kung ano yung mga maling katuruan, ituro natin yung tama na sinasabi ng Biblia. I'm not saying na masamang tao ang naka, 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 nakasali sa iba't ibang reliyon. It's not about the people. It's about the teachings. It's about kung ano yung sinusundan natin. Buksan natin natin mga mata. Subukan natin manalangin. I-challenge natin ang Panginoon. Let's challenge Him. Lord, ano ba yung tama? Turo mo sa akin. I challenge you. And then, you'll be surprised how the Lord will respond to your prayer. Part 2. Pag-usapan natin. Ano yung nangyari sa Book of Deuteronomy? Now, sa Part 2, these are all about commandments for the present. Chapters 5 to 6. Now, ito yung mga important warning no, given by God to Israel. Having reminded the people of the past, no, Moses then warns them of the necessity of obeying God's word in the present. Sabi ko sa inyo, simple lang si Lord. Eh. For over 400 years, hmm, alala ko lang, 369 ba? Or 
basa almost 400 years din tayo no ng mga Pilipino na under ng Spanish reign slaves din tayo for almost 400 years parehas sa mga Israel now Israel had been for almost for, for over 400 years no Israel had been without their own land mga nomad sila ang ibig sabihin araw-araw camping wala silang lugar imagine yun araw-araw para kang nagka-camping camping is fun for about an, an overnight or two nights no pero sobra doon nako inconvenient na okay and most of that time sa 400 over years okay they had been slaves so <sighs> pwede rin tayo paging slave ng kasalanan kung magpapaikot-ikot tayo at hindi tayo didiretso sa Diyos. Kailangan matuto tayo dito sa mga Israelites. And they wandered in wilderness for 40 years. Imagine nyo, 20 days travel, laging 40 years. And now they're about to settle down in their own land. Therefore, they need to be aware of the dangers that will come with this new land. In chapter 7, they are told not to compromise with the enemies. Okay, so since papasok sila sa, sa Canaan, may bago na silang bahay, pinigyan sila ng bagong land ng Panginoon, eh, winarningan din sila na not to compromise no, sa kanilang mga enemies. Tingnan natin. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 3 to 4. Do not intermarry with them. Mm. Mm-hmm. Ba't ganun naman, Lord? Love wins. <laughs> But kada naman Lord mahal ko siya kahit hindi ka kahit, na, nabigla lang si Lord na sinaktan niya ako. <laughs> mahal ko pa rin siya. Pero hindi kay parehas ang pananampalataya anak, ikaw ay nagmamahal sa akin, ako ay nagmamahal sa iyo. No, kaya sinasabi ko hindi siya ang para sa iyo. Kapag ka pinilit mo, may hirapan ka. I have someone, I have somebody na pinipira para sa iyo. I just have to trust me. No, Lord, eto na eh. Ayun ko lang ito na. Alam mo yung, eto na, tumibok na yung puso ko. Ah, pero doon pa pala ito sinasabi. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons or they will turn your children away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and you will quickly destroy and you and and will quickly destroy you. Nako, alalahanin si Solomon. Pag-uusapan natin 'yan sa mga sa mga future uh, Wednesdays. Nako. Ay nako, 300 wives, 700 concubines. Most of them hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, serving other gods. What happened to Solomon? Right? Wisest man na yun, ah, in the whole earth. Okay. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Moses cautioned the people. Okay? Sabi ng Biblia, for you are holy. For God, for your God is holy. So be holy. You are separated. Okay? So hindi ibig sabihin na parang, eh, kami ang righteous or live a, a, ano, kumbaga, a self-righteous life. Hindi. Ang ibig sabihin nito, ikaw ay ginawa ng Diyos, sineperate, no? meron siyang ipoprovide sa iyo. You don't have to uh, pangunahan lahat nung, 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 ginaga, nung, nung, nung plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Itong Israel, eh, masyado rin kasing uh, naging kampante. Okay? God told Israel to utterly destroy wicked nations and not compromise with them in any way. Do not intermarry, do not... Alam, Okay, makipag-negotiate sa kanila, whatever. Now, people, eh siyempre, alam niyo naman, panahon ni Moses pa lang, <clears throat> uso na mga bashers. May bashers na yan, si Moses. Nako, araw-araw binabash yan. <laughs> My goodness. People who do not understand the judgment of God or the awfulness of sin ay ginawa nila nakipagtalo sa Diyos. No? They argue with God. Nako, Lord, you're so cruel. No, yung mga Christians mo, they're so cruel. No, love wins. You are God. You are love, 'di ba? Sabi mo, we must love each other. Eh ito, 'di ba? Kapo ako mahal ko. So, love wins, Lord. At saka ito, eh Christian din naman siya, Lord. Christian yung pangalan niya. <laughs> eh, Lord Christian din 'to. Ako born again siya. 
uh, Mormons, Iglesia ni Cristo, uh, Seventh-day Adventists, Catholic, oh, Christian din naman yun, Lord. Is, 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 kung ikaw ay kristyano at mayroon relasyon sa Panginoon Diyos or you were born again, tandaan mo, napakaganda ng plano ng Diyos sa'yo. Huwag mo siyang pangunahan. Meron siya na meron siya na plano na na siya lang ang pwedeng mag-execute. Pag pinangunahan mo siya, matuto ka kay Sarah. Pag pinangunahan mo siya, matuto ka kay Leah at kay Rachel. Pag pinangunahan mo siya, makikreate ka na maraming scenes in the future. Na hindi lang ikaw mag- magkakaroon ng problema, pati yung mga anak mo. ba? Diba? Pastor, mahal ko siya. Sabi ko, eh, isipin mabuti. Hindi, eh, mahal ko talaga siya. O oh, sige, in the future, babalik ka dito. Pero iba na ang ating counseling. O, oh, maaaring in the brink of maghihiwalay kayo, maaaring magdi-divorce kayo. So, anyway, hindi lang patungkol dun. Okay? Madaming klase ng wickedness no, ang uh, tinutukoy dito ng Panginoon. So, however, no, If they knew, kung alam lang nila the sinfulness of these nations, kaya pinapa, pinapa, pinapalayo sila ng Panginoon. No? The sinfulness of these nations, religions, no? and the way they had resisted God. Okay? They would be thankful Israel did wipe them out. No? There are people na who belong to other faith na they don't just resist God. In fact, They disrespect God and intermarrying with them is an insult to our God. Okay? So, we, we need to... I'm, I'm not saying that you do this, you do that, you have your free will, but I am just asking, I'm just encouraging you. Think twice and ask the Lord. You know, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Is this the way to go to? Ask the Lord and He will guide you. Tingnan natin ano yung nangyari particularly. Genesis, ah sorry, Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 11 to 17. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, falling to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, And when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, and then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land. With its venomous snakes and scorpions, he brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known. To humble and test you, so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Yon. Ingat-ingat din, ano? Baka magyabang tayo. Ang tanong, is this not part? No? Is this not part of our problem today as Christians? No? Nung binasa natin. When times are hard and we have to depend on God for daily needs, eto na, Lord! Uh, be remember to obey Him. Uh, dalas natin simbahan. Active tayo. Active tayo sa faith. Dasal tayo, eh. basa tayo, may need tayo eh. Yun lang. Para tayo mga, minsan mga Israelites, on the other hand, when things are going our way, a nice home were provided by God, a freezer full of food, two cars, 4K TV, etc., etc. We tend to forget God. Then God has to chasten us to remind us from whom all these blessings come. Sometimes na-realize ko, list down ko kaya. Eh, total, araw-araw na babasa ko, naririnig ko kung anong masamang dulot nitong pandemic eh. Di ba, madaming namatay, madaming nagsarado, madaming na walang trabaho, madaming na karoon ng mental illness, bla bla bla. Eh, mga iba naman, sulat ko, list down ko. Ano yung mga magandang benefits ng pandemic? Nakita ko dito, 
ang pamilya nagkaroon ng family bonding. Force bonding. <laughs> Nakita ko dito ang mga dagat, ang mga ang, ang air quality gumanda. Nakita ko dito uh, yung 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 kalikasan nagkaroon nagkaroon ng pag, ng pahinga. Ni kaya na abuse natin so much no. Kaya somehow we were reminded by God. Don't get me wrong, hindi evil ang Panginoon na mag-create ng COVID-19 iba't iba to sa atin. These are the natural principles and laws of this earth that there would be viruses and everything. And he he can allow it. No? For us to be reminded, He can make use of it, of that situation, for us to be reminded that, hey, no, you're abusing things that I've given to you. Or there's an opportunity for Him not only to remind people, but also to manifest His power that is capable of saving you. Talo ka na. Kung nanonood ka ngayon, nakikinig ka ngayon, at buhay ka, malakas ka. At wala kang sakit. O kung nagkasakit ka man, buhay ka hanggang ngayon. ba? Diba? Sinasagip ka ng Panginoon. Alam niya, balik tayo kay Moses. Moses then tells the people, God will give them the promised land. Not because of their goodness or righteousness, but because of His promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yan yung sinabi ni Moses. Ibigay sa inyo ang promised land dahil hindi kayo righteous, dahil hindi kayo mabait. O dahil mabait kayo, o dahil righteous kayo, meron kayong promise lang. Hindi. Dahil ito ay promise ng Panginoon. Fast forward. Alam nyo, you're experiencing promise land right now. You're experiencing safety, protection, provision, everything. Gets blessings from the Lord. Or if you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you will, you will experience no eternity. Not because you're good. Not because you're righteous. Because that is the promise, no? By Jesus. Jesus, na hindi deliver lang. Si Moses, deliver lang ng Egypt. Jesus is the deliverer of all of us. Okay, the way, the truth, the life. Remember? is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So, those blessings, those grace, it's because of Jesus. Because that's a promise. In chapter 12, ano nangyari? The people are reminded of the importance of worship. And in chapter 13, they told how to test the false prophets. Hmm. Sana naman magamit din natin itong ang daming false prophets ngayon ako. In chapter 14 to 26, no, these are review of some particular laws and regulations by which Israel must live. Part 3, ano nangyari? Israel's future. Chapters 27 to 30. Ano, ano, ano pinag-usapan dito? In chapter 27, Israel is told that upon entering the land, they are to set up the great stones. Bakit? Pagbasok daw nila sa Canaan, magtatayo ng great stone. Kasi sabi sa Deuteronomy 27.8, And you shall write very clearly all the words of this law on these stones you have set up. Reminder ulit. Okay, in chapter 28, 29. Well, anong reminder? Reminder ng faithfulness ng God. Reminder na kanyang mga laws. Reminder na, you are my children, Israel. Do not forget that. Okay? In chapter 28, 29, it gives a glimpse of the enjoyment. Ayan, maganda. And the new, the new land will bring. Maga, hope, hope, hope. No? Enjoy niya yan. Nako. Land flowing with milk and honey. But there is also prophecy of Israel's chastening, captivity, and scattering as a nation. Yun nga. No? May prophetic vision din na kakaroon kayo ng hmm, pagkakastigo, kakalat-kalat kayo, magiging slaves kayo kasi hindi gusto ng Diyos yun, consequence yun, ng kasalanan nila. Kaya dapat matuto tayo. In chapter 29, it summarizes the basic facts of the covenant. God has redeemed the... Ito, ito, sinasabi dito, napakasimple. Sa chapter 29, sinamarize, basic na basic. Ano yung covenant between God and Israel? And they are responsible to obey Him because God has redeemed them. Okay? If they obey, He will bless them. Simple lang. If they don't, if they disobey, He will judge them. Mm. 
Kung may programang bawal ang judgmental kay Lord, pwede ang judgmental. Siya lang ang pwede na maging judgmental. Kasi siya yung judge natin eh. Siya yung great judge. Okay, kapag ka ikaw sumunod, fast forward 2020, sumunod ka sa Panginoon, He will bless you. Kapag nagdisobey ka sa Panginoon, He will judge you. Moses reminded them of the Lord's faithfulness. Hindi lang sila tinatakot. Bas, kumbaga, hindi ito pananakot eh. Kumbaga na the Lord will bless you if you obey Him. The Lord will, dis- if you disobey, you will be judged. These, these are facts. Ito ay katotohanan. No? Hindi sila tinatakot. Pero maganda kay Moses, sinabi niya rin na niremind sila yung faithfulness ng Panginoon. Sa Deuteronomy chapter 29.5 Yet the Lord says during the 40 years, remember that I led you to the wilderness. Nako, your clothes did not wear out nor did the sandals on your feet. Eh kung nagnegosyo ang Amazon nun, si Jeff Bezos. Nung panahon na yun, sigurado lugi siya. Kasi for 40 years, walang bibili sa kanya. Hmm, lalo na kung siya. Kapatid yan ng Chinese at Ilocano. <laughs> Di ba? Napaka-frugal na mga yan. And, well, imagine mo, ganun ka-faithful ang Lord. No? Hindi ka magpapalit <coughs> ng sapatos. Hindi ka magpapalit ng sandals, ng clothes. Hindi na butas, hindi na punit, hindi rabupok. Alright? Hindi ka pupunta sa Macy's, hindi ka pupunta sa Ross, sa SM, or whatever. Ganun siya ka-faithful. That's why that Moses reminded them of the Lord's faithfulness. Saan ka pa? Di ba? Provided ka na, protected ka pa. Asan ka pa? Di ba? May plano pa sa'yo sa future na pagpalaing ka. Chapter 30, ano sinabi? Chapter 30 tells of the future of the restoration of Israel to her land. Hmm. Nangyari na yan. Hanggang ngayon, di ba? 1948 na yan. Ah, kita mo, nandun na sila ulit. Israel enjoyed the blessings for less than 1,000 years before being taken captive by the Babylonians. Okay. <clears throat> Ako, magandang story din yan sa Daniel, no? yung captivity nila. Pero anyway, uh, 1,000 years, no? Ako, uh, isa sa mga favorite ko dito yung golden years na tinatawag. No? Yung, si, yung, si Idol, isa sa mga lord din natin, si King David ang uh, kanilang hari. Yun yung golden years nila. Yung mga war, pinagpapanalo nila. Blessing na Israel talaga nag a tipong ginagalang sila ng ibang bansa ng reign ni Solomon na pati yung ibang mga leaders pumupunta at nagbibigay ng mga gifts sa kanila kaya lalo silang yumaman. It is interesting to note, no? ito maganda to the similarities between Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 to 14 and Romans chapter 10 verses 6 to 9. Tingnan natin, basahin natin. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verses 11 to 14. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Kasi nga, hindi nga kasi ganun. Ka, ano komplikado ang Diyos? Sino kinakomplicate lang ng iba para magmukha sila matalino? It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. Anong similarity nito? Fast forward sa New Testament, Romans 10, 6 to 9. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Boom! Simple, di ba? Ano bang, ano bang mahirap intindihin doon? Part 4, as we end. The death of Moses. Chapters 31 to 34. In these transition chapters, Moses gives his final words to the people he has loved and led for 40 years. 
It is worth noting Moses remained loyal to his people. Mm. Even when they were criticizing him, bashers, no? Dan bashers, rebelling against him and lying about him. Mm. Kung ikaw, worker, leader, pastor sa church, pwede mo sabihin kay Moses, bro, I feel you. <laughs> Pero, I encourage you, keep on going. Keep on working, keep on serving the Lord, keep on leading, keep on pastoring, keep on shepherding. Why? Gayahin mo si Moses. No? Kahit anong madinig mo, kahit sinong umarang sa'yo, harangan ka man ng sibat, push mo, push mo ang goal ng Panginoon. Still, lead your people, love your people, embrace them, hug them, show them that the Lord loves them, and manifest the love of God through you as their pastor, as their leader, as their worker, as their servant. 40 years of business si Moses. 40 years siya. Kasi 120 siya eh, na nabuhay. Yung first 40 niya, Prince of Egypt siya. In second 40, after 40 years, nakapatay siya ng Egyptian. Nag-OFW muna siya. <laughs> Nag, uh, nagmunta sa isang foreign land. 40 years siya doon. Naging farmer yata siya doon or shepherd or whatever. Nakapangasawa siya doon. 40 years siya na no, naka-exile. After 40 years on his 80th year, no, ayun, tinawag siya ng Panginoon. Come, come back to Egypt. Deliver my people. And 40 years from na from nailabas niya yung tao ng mga Israelites sa Egypt, 40 years siya nag-minister as their pastor, as their shepherd. Kaya kung ikaw, ah, gusto mo nang bumigay bilang pastor, basahin mo story ni Moses. Ma-encourage ka. Kaya, You have more than 40 years. You have more than 40 years no? para mag-ministry. Okay, Moses knew he would never enter the promised land. Yet he did everything possible to see that his people got to enter. Yan, yan ang attitude. Binabato ka na. Hindi ka na minamahan. Make sure that your people will enter the promised land of God. Okay? You're not there for you to be liked. You're not there for you to be popular. It's not a popularity contest. Okay, you're there to serve the Lord. Kung titingnan mo lahat ng mga biblical characters, hindi rin naman ginusto. Binugbog din si Paul, pinapapatay mga apostles. I mean, even si Jesus, hindi rin siya ginusto. You're not there for a popularity contest. If you're there para magpopular, you're, you're in the wrong business. Okay? Ang maganda kasi siya kay Joke Moses kasi he created the Joshua generation. Eh, no? Pinipay niya. Eh. Diba? Joshua, the next leader. Meron siyang succession planning. Di ba? Meron, napaka-selfless niya. Meron siyang training system. Tinrain niya to. Sina Aaron, sina, ano, sina, sina Joshua, itong mga, mga tao na to, yung mga Levites, tin, tinrain niya lahat siya. Ito isa sa mga pinaka maraming pagkakamali ng maraming churches ngayon. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years na in existence, pastoring, shepherding a church. Wala pa ring assistant pastor. Walang younger pastor. They are not there to 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 lead to leave. No? Kasi feeling nila mabubuhay sila forever. Tandaan nyo, si Moses pumigay din. Panahunta na bago ka sumampa, mag-accept as the new board, as the new music ministry head, as the new uh, pastor, as the new uh, uh, children ministry head, as the... Whatever, whatever position na kagampanan mo sa simbahan. First on your list, agenda mo, number one. Lord, iyak ka. Sino ang Joshua generation ko? Kasi nandun yung discipleship eh. Sa process ng discipleship, natuturuan mo yung next generation. No, 10 years younger than you, 5 years younger than you, 20 years younger than you. Piniprepare mo sila sa position mo. Because you will not last forever. That's the truth. On that, yung simbahan nagsasara. Pag namatay ang pastor, sarado. Kukunin yung flock ng ibang mga church. Kasi hindi na-prepare yung Joshua generation. Diba? Kasi we look at it sometimes na simbahan, business. Kailangan ng sumalo yung anak. Hmm, hindi naman po kailangan ganun. Minsan, tinawag yung anak. That's better. Pero minsan, nagpatawag lang yung anak. Ay, nako, sigurado, simple lang yan in the future. Kailangan, ang nakapwesto, tinawag ng Diyos. Importante yun. Kapag ka leader ka ng simbahan, sa kang worker, isang pastor, importante, tinawag ka ng Diyos. Dapat Joshua ka. 
Kung di ka ready, bibigay ka lang. Okay? So, ganiting ginawa ni Moses. Meron siyang succession planning, may selflessness, training system, at saka is there to lead, to leave. Okay? So, I encourage everyone na let's lead to leave. Okay? Magplano tayo to lead and then leave. Kasi eventually, magiging ang katawan natin. Eventually, hindi na tayo mag- hindi tayo magiging relevant sa, sa future generation. Allow the next generation na to come step in at uh, ibigay sa kanila yung leadership. The book of Deuteronomy was to be read publicly you know, every seven years at the Feast of Tabernacles. Ayan. Sana no, meron din ganito ang mga Krisyano na every seven years basahin yung buong entire Deuteronomy sa simbahan. Magandang project yan. Pag-isipan natin in the future. In chapters 34, uh, in chapter 34, God allows Moses to view the promised land which is a symbol of what the law can do. Inalaw niya naman. Kita niya yung promised land. Hindi siya nakapasok. The law, no? Kasi, kaya bakit ito naging symbol of what the law can do? The law helps us to see God's standard but it cannot empower us to attain it. Mm. Something to think about, right? There's wisdom in there's wisdom in that. After viewing the promised land, namatay na si Moses. God alone is present at his death. And God, hmm, this is interesting, buries him. Siya naglibing. Moses is the only human God has ever buried. Okay? Buried. Okay, buried, buried. If the people could have known the place, nako, puti na lang, hindi nila alam. They would probably have made a shrine and worship it. Alam mo naman to mga to. May history to. Yung calf nga eh. Golden calf eh. We know worship eh. Si Moses pa kaya. Pero how ironic, no? Patapos mong ibash, i-worship mo. <laughs> God buried Moses. Deuteronomy 34.6 He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Buti na lang. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. Moses, this is interesting, was 120 years old when he died. Yet, 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 his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Malakas pa rin siya at hindi pa rin nalalabaw mata niya. Two years ago, na-experience ko po magsalamin. Kasi all my life, no, mali daw ang paningin ko. Pero two years ago, no, since papasok na ako doon sa tinatawag na golden years, naramdaman ko na pag nagbabasa ako. Sabi naman, 2020 pa rin ang vision, pero kailangan ko lang na reading glasses. Dahil pag nagbabasa ako, nagbablur siya. So sabi ko, kailangan kong tanggapin. Pero si Moses, 120, no? yet his eyes were not weak. No? And his friend, oh, hindi nawawala. Eh ako eh, konting padyak lang kung papanik sa uphill. Uh, pag mountain biking, eh talaga eh, <laughs> Lumalawit yung dila ko. <laughs> the people weep for Moses for 30 days. Wow. Moses, like many good people, was more appreciated after he was gone than while he was alive. Right? Kalungkot ano. Totoo yan. Kaya dapat kumikilala ka. Mahalin mo na hanggat buhay. Mas maganda. Bigyan mo ng flowers hanggat buhay. Bigyan mo ng pera hanggat buhay. No? Bigyan mo ng pagkain hanggat buhay. Kausapin mo hanggat buhay. Hindi yung iyak ka ng iyak pag nawala. Di ba? Eh si Moses, eh, nung nabubuhay, binabash nila. Eh, nung namatay, iyak, iyak, iyak sila. Di ba? O kaya, yung mga pastor nyo, mahalin nyo. Pag namatay yan, eh, iyak, iyak kayo. Di ba? O yung kontrahin at pag yung, uh, kumbaga, saksakin patalikod mahalin nyo dahil uh, yan ay binigay sa inyo na parang si Moses no, na truan at shepherd kayo for your spiritual growth. Okay, the Israelites are now ready to enter and claim the land God has promised to them. Okay, the next book, Joshua, no, picks up the story at this point. Ayan, exciting. Next week, pag-usapan natin the book of Joshua. No? Sabi nga nila, Joshua, <laughs> Pero as I end, no, seriously, ang Israel, their, deliver, they, their deliverer died, si Moses. But I would just like to remind you and encourage you today, ours live, no? in deliver natin, buhay. And His name is Jesus. 
Kung gusto mo lamang, sabi kanina, kung mag ka, hmm, i-bless ka. Kung mag disobey ka, hmm, it's a charge ka ng Panginoon. Kaya, I encourage you, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And He will deliver you from your sins. No? At hindi lang yun, He will promise you a beautiful life with Him in paradise. Let us pray. If you are here, if you want to, if you want to accept Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, kanina sabi, Jesus, the Savior, di ba? Moses, the Deliverer, pero namatay. Jesus, the Deliverer, namatay, nabuhay ulit, at babalik para sa iyo. Dahil meron pa siyang unfinished business, isi-save ka niya. Pwede niyang mangyari yan ngayon kung maniniwala ka lamang. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But I believe that you died upon the cross for me. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of my sins. And I believe that on the third day you rose from the dead and went to heaven to prepare a place for me. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend, my, my Master, my everything. Come into my heart and set me free from my sins. Cleanse me, wash me, Lord. And because you are my Savior, I shall not die, but have everlasting lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Please, next Sunday, don't be late for church. Nine o'clock tayo. Sa Zoom tayo magsasama-sama. Pastor Manny will preach. You know? We will give you the account, the ID, some ID. And then just log in. Kung hindi man, uh, hindi ka po pwede, meron tayong a live stream. Abangan mo na lang yun. So, Pastor Manny will preach next Sunday and then the following Sunday, we will be with the uh, LA First English to celebrate 125th anniversary of the LA First Church of the Nazarene. And the following Sunday, uh, Pastor Manny will preach again. Uh, sa Zoom ulit tayo, magsasama-sama tayo sa Zoom. No? At meron din tayong live stream. And hopefully, hopefully, on November 1, we can reopen the church uh, in person at live stream. All right? Game ka na ba? Maraming maraming salamat. This is your LA First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us, for uh, listening to us, for uh, uh, growing with us. And um, God bless you. Have a great Wednesday. And uh, stay safe. Wear a mask. Keep distance. Wash your hands. God bless you. Bye.